by A. A. Milne. Chapter 3. In which Pooh and Piglet go hunting and nearly catch a woozle. Piglet lived in a near, very grand house in the middle of Birch Trees. Birch Trees was in the middle of the forest, and Piglet lived in the middle of the house. Next to his house was a piece of broken board, which had trespassers wood on it. When a ro- um, critter robin asked Piglet what it meant, he said it was grandfather's name. It had been in the family for a long time. Grandfather Critter Robin said he didn't couldn't be called trespassers W and Piglet said yes he could. Because his grandfather was. It was short for trespassers Will, which is short for trespassers William. His grandfather had two names in case he lost one. Trespassers after an uncle and William after trespassers. I've got two names, said Critter Robin carelessly. Well, there you are. That proves it, said Piglet. On a fine winter's day, as Piglet was brushing away the snow in front of the house, he happened to look upon it up, and there was Winnie the Pooh. Pooh was walking around, around in circles, thinking of something else. When Piglet called to him, he just went on walking. Hello, said Piglet. What are you doing? Hunting, said Pooh. Hunting what? Tracking something, said Winnie the Pooh, very mysteriously. Tracking what? said Piglet, coming closer. Just what I want... I ask my what I ask myself. I ask myself what? What do you what do you think you answer? I just have to wait till I catch up with it. So when he pooh now look here, he pointed to the ground in front of him. What do you see there? Track, said Piglet. Pearl mark. He gave a little squeal of fire. Oh Pooh, do you think it's a whistle? It may be, said Pooh, something is sometimes it is. Sometimes it isn't. You never can tell with Paul Mark. With these few words he went on tracking. A piglet also watching him for a minute or two. Ram asked him, When he had come to a sudden stop, running over the tracks and the puddles all the way. What's the matter? said Piglet. Very funny thing, said Bear. It's right, they seem to be two animals now. It's whatever it was, they joined by another, or whatever it is. The two of them, the other seemed to be company. Would they mind going with, coming with me, Piglet? In case they turn out to be hostile animals, Piglet scratched his ear in a nice sort of way and said he had nothing to do till Friday. Be likely to come in case it really was a whistle. You mean in case it really is two whistles? said Piglet Pooh. Piglet said that anyone who had nothing to do until Friday. So off they went together. With a small spinning of birch trees just for the ears, it seemed as if the two whistles, they what they were, were going round and spinning. Going round and spinning went Pooh and Piglet after them. Piglet passing the time by telling Pooh his grandfather first to pass his W had done to was had done to remove stiffness of the tracking. And then his grandfather trespassed his W and started in his later years to shorten his breath and other matters of interest and Pooh wondering what grandfather was like. The catch that this was two grandfathers. They were now after now. So whether he was allowed to take one home, keep it. What Christopher Robin was saying, the field tracks were on in front of them. Suddenly, Winnie the Pooh stopped and pointed at the tightly in front of him. Look, what, said Piglet in a bit of a jump. So, they had to show that he hadn't been frightened. Jumped up and down, once or twice more, his lips were slightly sort of way. The tracks, said Pooh, a third of them joined the other two. Pooh cried, Piglet, do you think it's the other one? No, said Pooh, because it may make better, different tracks. Mark, it's either two whistles and one, and it might be a whistle or two, and it might, it might be whistles and one. If so, it's a whistle. Let us continue to follow them. So he went on, spinning just a little anxious now. In case the three animals in front of them were the hostile intent, Piglet wished very much his phone father, D.W., as there, insisted on elsewhere, and Pooh thought how nice it would be to meet if they met Christopher Robin suddenly. And quite accidentally, only because he liked Christopher Robin so much. And then all of a sudden, Winnie the Pooh stopped again, licked the tip of his nose in a coolly manner, but feeling more hot and anxious than ever in his life before. There were four animals in front of him, then. Did you see, Piglet? Look at their tracks. Three of them there were woozles. One of them was a whistle. Another whistle. Whistle would have joined them. But it seemed to be there were tracks crossing each other here and there, getting muddled up. Each, each other there, but not quite plainly, every now and then, 
the tracks of four sets of paws. I think, said Piglet, when we licked up the tip of his nose too, I found it would brought a little comfort. I think that I just remembered something. I just remembered something I forgot to, to do yesterday and shan't be able to do tomorrow. So I suppose I might, I already ought to go back and do it now. Well, we'll do it this afternoon and I'll come with you, said Pooh. Isn't that sort of thing you can do this in the afternoon, said Piglet quickly? It's a very peculiar morning thing. It has to be done in the morning, and it's possible to the hours of what you say that the time was. About twelve, said Pooh, Poo, looking at the sun. Between, between what, as you're saying, the hours of twelve, twelve to five. So really, dear old Pooh, if you excuse me, what's that? Pooh looked at the sky, and then as he heard a whistle again, he looked up the branches, a big oak tree, and then he saw a friend of his. It's Chris and Rummy, he said. Ah, you, then you all will be all right, said Piglet. Be quite safe with him. Goodbye. He took off home as quickly as he could, very glad to be out of all danger again. Chris and Rummy came slowly down his tree. Silly, I'll bear, he said. What are you doing? First he went round and spinning twice by himself. Then Piglet ran after him. Then he went round again, and then he was just coming round a fourth time. Wait a minute, said Penny Pooh. Holding his paw, his paw, set down the fault, the most thoughtful way he could think. Then he fitted his paw into one of the tracks. Then he scratched his nose twice and said, Yes, said Winnie Pooh. I see now, said Winnie Pooh. I have been foolish and deluded, said he. I'm a bear, no brain at all. You're the best bear in the world, all the world, said Chris uh, Robin soothingly. Am I, said Pooh, hopefully. Then he brightened up suddenly. Anyhow, he said, it's any luncheon time. So he went home for it.